lives a day kind of like today. And it's a day I'll never forget. It's the worst day of my career. Started pretty much the way just about any day starts. I was lead truck heading back for my second round out of that loader. 155 main, six up for low bed. It's roughly 10 o'clock in the morning, just when the crew was coming back with their second round. 155 main, 14 down. There was a fella on his way out to go do some fishing. You know, he's just driving along, not a care in the world. One fifty five main, ten down. With all the radio chatter that was going on, my biggest problem is I was worried that I was going to miss a call. There's places there that's barely wide enough for a log truck to go through. You have to assume that everybody is coming around that corner. One fifty-five main eight down. This guy didn't call on the radio, or if he did, I didn't hear it. Don't know whether he had a radio or not, but there's no way this guy knew I was coming. Until he came around the corner. And there I was. There was nothing I could do. I took the far outside of the road as far as I could, and I hammered on the brakes as best I could. He hit my trailer head on. But that's not what happened today. Everything went right today, because everybody followed the rules of the road. Uh, just up to Lost Lake to meet some friends. Okay, do you have a radio? No. Um, I'm headed up near there, so why don't you follow me up? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay, if I pull over, just pull in behind me. That means a load of trucks coming down. Okay, all right, sounds great. Great. For the public that use these roads, there's things they need to know and things they need to respect. And when they don't do that, it gets everybody into trouble. There's a right and a wrong way to use the resource roads, and everybody at the end of the day wants to go home safe. 155 main, six up for low bed. When you come out of the block with a load on, we call the road name, our location, and our direction. And sometimes we include the vehicle type. On some roads, only the loaded traffic calls, but the rules are posted at the beginning of the road. 155, 14, down. On the way up, you call your road number, your kilometer, and up. 155 main, six up. Radio chatter is detrimental to anybody that's driving these resource roads. If you want to be us somewhere else, fill your boots. 
but don't use the whole road channel for just yakking on. You might very well miss a call. If you think you missed one, you're doubting yourself. You don't know whether you did or whether you didn't. To not know whether people are coming at you is just terrible. At the start of every resource road, the signs will be posted. The most important should be the road that you're traveling on and the radio channel that you should be listening to and calling on. If you see someone on the road that does not look like they have a radio, best is to stop them and ask if you could be of assistance and lead them to where they need to go and you can call for them. Normally I would rent a radio, I didn't have a chance today, and they would program all the resource road channels for me. In this case, I took her up on her offer to let me follow her. I think it was a good option because she had a radio and I didn't. 155 main, two up. If a logging truck came down, we could both pull over safely and let that logging truck by. The vehicles coming down have the right of way and the vehicles that are going up will use the pullouts and move out of the way of the down traffic. 155. Eight down. It's important to be listening to the traffic coming down if you're headed up, because if I'm headed up and I hear a loaded truck within two kilometers, I need to find a pullout. Because I had a radio, I could hear where the loaded truck was at every point along the way. These roads are totally different than a highway. There could be wildlife, there could be vehicles with no radios. These roads change daily. You can go from bone dry to sloppy wet, and the higher you get back, the worse they get. I mean, from potholes to rocks sticking out of the road to rocks rolling down off the road to steep banks, deep ditches, you just never know. It's a working road. You gotta expect the unexpected. Before I came out here, I left a plan with my wife, and we had a plan that if I wasn't back by a certain time, she knew what to do. I've also got first aid kit, extra blankets, extra food and water, just in case we're stuck out here. So it is really important to plan for the drive, and that's just as important as it is to plan for the trip that you're taking. Until you actually get out here and you see those trucks, uh, especially right beside you, you realize how big they are. That truck takes a massive amount of time and energy to stop it. And to figure that truck is going to stop and pick up lengths is just not going to happen. And that's why you always have to assume that everybody is coming around that corner. And to think otherwise is just deadly. The rules out here are pretty straightforward. You need to be focused and listening to the two-way radio if you have one. 155 main, I'm clear at six. Use the pullouts and move out of the way of the down traffic. Always drive at a speed that reflects the road conditions. Always have your headlights and taillights on. Wear your seatbelt and avoid distractions. Never pass an industrial vehicle unless the driver signals it's safe to do so, and even then proceed with extreme caution. It's very important that everybody understand the rules of the road. Nobody wants to see anybody injured. Nobody wants to get injured and nobody wants to be the person that's run over and killed somebody. So it's imperative that everybody understand the rules of the road and use the rules to keep safe to enjoy another day.